I did have a lot of one-on-one -on -one moments with the president before the camera turned on. Those were interesting, especially during the radio addresses on the weekends, on Saturdays. Those were either in the Oval Office or at Camp David. So I would travel to the Camp David uh, quite frequently and see the president in his most relaxed state. So he did take time to talk to you beforehand when you were a staff member and kind of engage with you before you started your job. Yes, there was a really funny episode that happened one time when we were doing a radio address at Camp David. Part of my job before we did the radio addresses was to go over the script with the president to make sure there were no odd pronunciations of any words and the timing of the overall address to make sure we started on time and which paragraph was going to be at about what point during the address. At this particular one, there was someone named Tabitha being mentioned in the address. And I went over it and said, President Reagan, there's a name in here. Just wanted you to see it. It's Tabitha. And he goes, OK, Tabitha. Then we do the address, and President Reagan, who never made mistakes, <clears throat> said Tabatha, and I couldn't believe it. And so the next day, I got, a, or that night, I got a phone call from Elizabeth Ward, who I worked with, and she said, how could this have happened where he said Tabatha, Tabatha? And I said, I don't know. And the next day, a press release was issued saying, President Reagan had, was so sorry he made this mistake. <clears throat> and that Caroline was on duty that day as the press, as the television coordinator, but it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> they didn't really do the press release. On the personal side, what I loved about President Reagan was his engagement with people. So I saw him engaging with anyone from the public when we were traveling with him in the press office, and no matter who it was. The quality that was really special about him that I was observed was that he saw the essential humanity in every single individual. And he always connected exactly to that person in the most personal and engaging way, always making eye contact and asking questions about people's families and that kind of thing. I'll never forget that aspect of him. And it's something that I carry with me to this day and hope to incorporate into my own life as best as I can. During the time that my father was ambassador to the United Kingdom, I saw firsthand the Anglo-American relationship between the President and Margaret Thatcher. We did have several state visits where the President came to the United Kingdom and stayed at Winfield House, which is where we lived at the time. And his ability to connect with her on a human and personal level was so special to watch. And the friendship that developed between the two of them as a result of that personal connection is really what helped the countries really cement their bond. I was in my 20s and had a great deal of responsibility at that age, especially for live televised addresses, whether it was State of the Union, Oval Office addresses, radio addresses, all of that. It meant a great deal because I really loved my country and I loved his passion for our country and how much it meant to him and that he believed in everything he was doing.